Hello and welcome to another Giant Slayer TFT How to Play video. Today our analysts will be diving into how to play Ari Carry for patch 12.5. Ari received a few changes in the 12.5 patch, most notably was a reduction on the spread of her orbs. This means Ari has more consistent damage on single targets, helping her eliminate champions much faster than before. Alongside that was a starting mana buff, which helps Ari ramp up quicker during combat. Overall, this composition is still being figured out, meaning there's still plenty of innovation to be had. We'll be breaking down the core champions, traits, and items, as well as augments. After that, we'll take a brief look at each stage of the game, and at the end, we'll look at different ways to position Ari. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started. But before we begin, please don't forget to click the links in our description. Give your support to everyone who helped make this video happen. We host many TFT tournaments with plenty of exciting content to come. Be sure to also follow our Giant Slayer TFT social media pages. Alright, let's get back to the video. Starting off our how to play, let's cover the core champions and traits for Ari Carry. There's a number of playable variations, but to simplify them, we'll focus on the main three. Syndicate, Debonair, and Arcanist. Regardless of what variation you're playing, the carry is always going to be Ari. Depending on the composition, there are plenty of secondary damage dealers, but the star of the show is always Ari, so be sure to prioritize finding her at level 7 and 8 with good items. The first variation we'll be exploring is the Syndicate variation. In pretty much all iterations of Ari, you will usually have at least 3 Syndicate, though that's not a hard rule to follow. Specifically for a Syndicate board, the idea is to run 5-7 to seven Syndicates with added utility. Core champions will be Ari, Brahm, Morgana, Zyra, and Darius. Then you want an Arcanist such as Victor, Malzahar, or Vex. To round out the composition, any utility works well such as Orianna or Senna for Enchanter, Silco for Scholar, and because he's one of the best utility champions, or you can just instead aim for 7 Syndicates. In general, this is the easiest variation to play because it's straightforward and requires no special augments or emblems to play. Debonair Ari, on the other hand, does require an emblem as the goal is to turn Ari into a Debonair champion. Debonair fits well with Ari because it provides both increased health and AP, two stats that are amazing on her. Debonair Ari has the most flexibility for positioning since the bonus health keeps her alive longer. A standard Debonair board with Ari will be Ari, Leona, Brand, Syndra, plus one additional Debonair champion. The VIP can be any of the Debonair units, though Talon is the least useful for this build specifically. Alongside those champions, Morgana and Braum work best to round out the board with three syndicates. At level 8, any utility champion can be added such as Enchanter to pair with Morgana, Silco because he's Silco, or if you have another Debonair emblem, you can look to play 7 Debonair. Overall, this variation is the most well-rounded for Ari as you're giving her bonus health, AP, and some sustain from 3 Syndicates. That said, it is not reliable due to the reliance on needing a Debonair Emblem. And the final variation is the stock standard Arcanist Ari board. 4-6 Arcanist, big damage numbers, and wow, where'd the enemy team go? This is by far the most reliant on good augments and ideally an emblem, but it does have the highest potential damage output. That said, Ari is more like a sustained mage than burst, so the high amount of damage doesn't necessarily equate to a stronger board. In any case, this composition is simple as you want Ari, Vex, and then just toss in the rest of the Arcanists. From there, you can add in two more Syndicates or Enchanters or any utility that you want. For this build specifically, make sure you have really good defensive items for Vex as she's going to be the main frontliner. All in all, there's a lot of ways that you can play Ari Carry. There's even more variations that we didn't touch on, so we recommend playing flexibly with Ari because there's no one way to specifically run her. Let's move on to the next section, Core Items. First off, it's important to note that Ari is essentially unplayable without either blue buff or Shoujin. Yes, there are ways to play around this, like having Scholar, Socialite, or various Augments, but the most reliable way to play Ari is with a mana generating item. As such, tier is going to be your main priority at some point in the early stage of the game. Opening Carousel component priority will either be Rod or Tier, with Rod having more general use in the early game. The rest of the items for Ari are surprisingly flexible. Obviously, you want some type of damage, but that damage can be a Death Cap, Archangels, Jeweled Gauntlet, or even Giant Slayer. It mostly depends on what you're able to find. Jeweled Gauntlet is the least important because, as we mentioned earlier, Ari doesn't need to do burst damage, and Jeweled Gauntlet generally only works well when paired with Infinity Edge. The third item can either be more damage, utility, or an emblem. The best emblem by far is going to be Debonair for Ari, but Mutant can also be good in specific scenarios. For utility, Gunblade is the most common, but you only really need it in non-Syndicate variations, as Syndicate provides plenty of sustain. There has been some talk about Warmogs on Ari, and while making Ari more tanky is a good thing, Warmogs alone can be a problem because she's much more likely to get enforced. An enforced Ari means she won't cast right away and slows down her scaling in a fight, so we mostly recommend avoiding Warmogs unless there's another champion on your board with more health. 
As for the other items in the composition, it mostly comes down to defensive items for your frontliner. The most common frontliners are Vax, Morgana, Braum, and Leona. All of them can be item holders, it just mostly depends on your board. Finally, any utility items can do well, such as Shroud, Zephyr, or even a Chalice. Just keep in mind with the non-Ari items that the composition's goal is to buy time for Ari to scale in a fight, so look for anything that helps in that endeavor. We've already mentioned them a few times, but the emblems to look for are Debonair, Syndicate, and Arcanist. Those three add the most flexibility to Ari boards with Debonair specifically being good on Ari. Up next, let's talk about Augments. There's a lot of ways that you can play Ari boards and Augments, well, Augment that! Early game on 1-4, it's best to look for either an economy-focused Augment or a generic combat Augment. Anything too specific should be avoided because you're not always going to be playing Ari every game. That said, look for any combat or utility augment that is all around useful, meaning you want to avoid something like Knife's Edge, since it's primarily an AD-focused augment. But if you do have the option and don't mind forcing Ari, then trait-specific augments or AP-specific augments are quite good. Options like Luden's Echo, Blue Battery, or Battle Mage lean into AP boards without necessarily committing you later on. More specific trait options are any Heart or Emblem Augments for Syndicate, Debonair, or Arcanist. For Arcanist specifically, the best option is Runic Shield, though Keepers or Exiles are also useful to add more survivability. On 3-3, the choices can be tailored more towards Ari depending on your board. Economy Augments are often ignored at this stage, but it can be worth picking up for score to gamble hitting an early Ari. It's a risk, but you can either end up with an Ari or a few 4-cost units you can play until stage 4. In the worst case, it's a 16 gold boost to your econ. Other than AP combat augments, anything related to Syndicate, Arcanist, or Debonair is all right to aim for on 3-3. Keep in mind you do need a Debonair emblem for the variation, so don't go crazy all in on Debonair augments if you don't have one yet. The final augment is the simplest, as by the time 4-6 rolls around, you should already have an Ari composition started. Anything that boosts your specific board is ideal, especially if it provides additional survivability, because remember, the goal is to buy time for Ari. There are a ton of viable augments for Ari boards, so don't fret too much about having the perfect three. That concludes the bulk of what makes up an Ari composition. Let's now turn our attention to each stage of the game and what we want to look for when playing Ari beginning with the early game. Stage 1 and 2 are nothing special for this composition because your goal is to simply play as good of an opener as possible. Both win or loss streaks are viable, though we recommend opening with mercenaries if you're going on a loss streak. A mercenary payoff often has Nico's help, which is a surefire way to instantly stabilize your board after cashing out in Stage 4. The main issue in the early game is playing around an AP board because there's not as many options compared to AD. By far the best item holder is going to be VIP Brand, as blue buff causes him to churn out a ton of damage in CC. Forky and Lucian are also viable item holders, but their boards can be slightly harder to transition from later on. You'll also find open bruisers with an AP item holder because it's quite easy to flex into either Renata Bruiser or Ari Carry. But again, the opening board matters less compared to how you play it. Stage 3 and level 6 with the mid game is where things get a bit more interesting because at this point of the game, you can begin piecing together your Ari board. Morgana, Senna, Leona, Vex, and Malzahar are all solid mid-game champions for Stage 3 and 4, and using any of them can be an easy pivot point for Ari at Level 7. Just keep in mind that you won't know exactly what variation of Ari you'll be playing until you hit Level 7. Speaking of, level to 7 by 4-1, as this is where you want to roll some gold. Your goal at Level 7 is to find Ari and play a frontline. Play what you hit with Arcanist and Syndicates being the most common, but again, if you have an emblem, you can definitely run Debonair Ari. Ideally, you don't want to spend too much gold on 7, but do what feels best to stabilize your board. And then, the late game is where you want to finish putting your composition together at level 8, hit RE2, and begin focusing on positioning. Level 9 is certainly an option with this composition, but it's not ideal because there's often no major power spike at level 9. The best all-around win condition for Ari is the 3-star Her, or the 3-cost units on your board such as Morgana and Vex. Keep in mind that the current meta puts Ari compositions closer to 5th or 6th at best, so don't expect to win or place above 3rd with Ari. It's definitely doable, but think of her more as a top 4 composition than a 1st or 8th composition. Our last section is a quick guide to positioning Ari. Positioning depends a lot on your board and the lobby you're in, but specifically for Ari, there are two main spots to play her in. Either have her in the bottom left corner of the 3rd row, or the top right corner of the 2nd row. The reason for this is that Ari's orbs are a bit short on range, and that won't hit the enemy backline if she's positioned on the fourth row. Left side Ari can hit backline for players positioned on that side, and vice versa for the right side. It's worth noting that while these two spots are the most common, you should take into account the lobby. For example, a Blitzcrank to the far right on the first row can pull Ari in the left side cubby, so you want to be aware of that. 
It's also better to position as a ball against assassins, meaning you'd want to back row the Ari. The rest of your board is mostly about protecting Ari, so there's no specifics there. Frontline in the front of her, utility sprinkled around behind her. Bodyguards can also assist against assassins with their taunt, so try to keep them close to Ari. Lastly, be aware of CC. An Ari position towards the front is a risk of being perma CC'd, so always be scouting. There's no reason to be caught off guard by anything in the late game thanks to the in-game combat tracker. Always scout and reposition as remaining static is the easiest way to lose a round with Ari. That's all for today's video, folks. Ari Carry is an interesting new way to play EP now that she's at least somewhat viable. How well will Ari continue in the meta remains to be seen, but for now, you can definitely climb the ladder with all the different playable variations. Let us know in the comments section below which composition you'd like us to cover in our next How to Play video. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying our content, be sure to like button and subscribe. Here's your Giant Slayer, TFT Videos.